Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and welcome to my 400th video on YouTube. So I want to thank you guys for following me all this time. You're a big reason why I do this, so your support means a lot to me. So I'm not going to celebrate that in this video. I will have a separate video celebrating that, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I want to take a look at all the new Apple goodies that were just announced following WWDC. So we get new MacBook Airs, a new Airport Extreme, and a new Airport Time Capsule. So in this video, we're going to be doing the MacBook Air. So so let's get to it and look at both the 11 inch and 13 inch. Now the changes are largely internal here so we don't see a change on the external design. So we go from Ivy Bridge to Haswell processors which dramatically increase battery performance. So if you have an 11 inch MacBook Air you now have 9 hours versus 5 hours. And if you have the 13 inch you have 12 hours versus 9 hours. So there's a huge improvement in battery performance. Overall system performance is largely unchanged here. Uh, but we do get faster SSD so uh, we're going to test that in the benchmarks in this video. And we also get 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, which is uh, the next generation of Wi-Fi technology, which is one of the reasons we now have new airport extremes and airport time capsules, which I'll review in my next video. We also get improved graphics performance. We now have an Intel HD Graphics 5000 processor, and we're going to take a look at that in benchmarks in this video. So let's go ahead and start off with the unboxing. First, we're going to take a look at the 11 inch model. Now the 11.6 inch MacBook Air is Apple's most affordable laptop. So this starts off at $1,000. Now the version I have here is the base configuration. Uh, so that gets you a 1.3 gigahertz dual core i5 processor. You also get four gigs of RAM and 120 gig SSD. So that's a big improvement over what we've seen in the last model, uh, which had a standard 64 gig SSD, which I found to be too small. Uh, so it's good that they've bumped it up to 128 gigs without increasing the price. Uh, so we get 11.6 inch LED backlit resolution display. So that's 1366 by 768 pixels. So unfortunately we do not get our retina display with this MacBook Air. But we also have our new Intel HD Graphics 5000 processor which also improves performance. Alright so let's go ahead and crack into this plastic here. Lift the lid. All right, so we get a little tab here to lift up our MacBook Air. So still very light, still very thin. We'll set that aside for just a minute. Take a look at the accessories. Again, pretty familiar territory here. So we have our power brick. So again, this is using uh, MagSafe 2, the MagSafe 2 connector. So we pull this off. There is our MagSafe 2 connector. Uh, which debuted with the last generation, so the 2012 model, so this is slightly thinner design. We also get our familiar travel-friendly power brick here, which folds up nicely, so let's just peel off this plastic. So we have our folding prongs here, at least in the U.S. This pops off, so you can add your extension cable, which they've included here. Now you also have your cable management on this power brick, so all you have to do is fold these out and wind up your cable. Now you also have your literature here. Designed by Apple in California. Hello. So we're pretty familiar with this uh, booklet here. This is for OS X Mountain Lion. You can see all the features that it talks about as well as the accessories. Your MacBook Air important product and information guide as well as your standard Apple stickers. Alright, so let's get to the MacBook Air. We just have to peel off this plastic. Slide it out. There we go. So if we lift the lid, we should also find a piece of paper here protecting the screen from the keyboard. Remove that, and let's go ahead and take a look around. So once again, we have our wedge-shaped all-aluminum unibody design. So you can see that the keyboard sort of slants toward you. I actually find this a very comfortable design. So along the side, again, you see your MagSafe 2 power connector. You have your USB 3.0 port, so there's one here, one on the other side, so you get two. You also have your headphone jack, which is a combination headphone input or output as well as an input jack. Or microphones and that sort of thing. We also have our dual microphone setup which is new with this model so that is the one design distinction on this model that will flag it as a 2013 Haswell MacBook Air. So of course you have your thumbnail port here or whatever to uh, lift up the lid. Along the other side you'll find one USB 3.0 port and a Thunderbolt port for connecting the monitor or Thunderbolt accessories. Along the back you see we have our hinge here which integrates with the cooling system in the back so you can see the cooling to the chassis is milled inside this hinge. Again, very, very familiar design. We have our 
I think these are pentalibular screws. Are these pent yeah, these are pentalibular screws for removing the back panel. So this really isn't meant to be user removable. You can't upgrade your own RAM. So if you want eight gigs of RAM, which is optional, you probably want to do that before you get your MacBook Air because they're soldered on. So I definitely recommend upgrading to the eight gigs just because you can't upgrade it yourself. So here you have your plastic feet, which protect the bottom, and you can see all your product information on the long back. All right, so let's just lift the lid and take a look at our keyboard here. So again, this is pretty familiar territory here, really no changes. We have the same array of keys at the top. These are all function keys. So we have our escape key, our screen brightness keys. We also have our keyboard brightness keys. We have our mission control. We have our launcher, our media controls, volume up and down, as well as our power key. Otherwise, we have the standard array of Apple keys. We also have our large glass trackpad with multi-touch. MacBook Air branding here. We have our 11.6 inch glossy LC or yeah, LCD LED backlit display. We have our 720p FaceTime camera as well as a hidden LED light next to it, which is sort of etched into the metal so you can't see it until it's lit up. All right, so let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time. I'm just gonna tap the power key in the upper part of the keyboard. Now this does have that much faster SSD, which also improves boot performance. So you can see just how quickly this will boot up. There we go, so we're ready to start setting up our Mac. So we're gonna use English, United States. All right, so that is our 11.6 inch MacBook Air. And as you can see, the display hasn't changed here. This isn't a retina display. I wish they had improved the quality of the display. So for example, if you look off axis, you can see it loses quite a bit of color fidelity and contrast. Uh, so you kind of expect better with displays today. So I wish they had improved that, if not improved the resolution. Maybe that's coming in the future. Uh, so again, this is 11.6 uh, inches. So that's good for resolution of 1366 by 768. Now that's a pixel density of 135. So that's slightly better than the 13 inch model, which has a pixel density of 130 with a larger resolution of 1440 by 900. So keep that in mind, you do get a higher quality display with 11.6 inch model versus the 13. So let's go ahead and get to the 13 inch. All right, so here is the 13 inch model, which is only $100 more than the 11.6 inch model. Again, this is the base configuration, which has identical specs to the base configuration of the 11.6 inch model. So again, that's a 1.3 gigahertz dual core i5 Haswell processor, four gigs of RAM and 120 gig SSD with the Intel Graphics HD 5000. Now this of course has a larger battery, so you get better battery life in this case. You get 12 hours versus nine hours on the 11.6 inch model and you get an SD card slot. So only $100 more, you get quite a bit more computer but not quite the portability of the 11.6 inch model. So let's go ahead, crack this open and take a look. All right, so just cut the plastic. Lift the lid. There is our fresh 13 inch MacBook Air still in its plastic. We're gonna set that aside for just a minute while we take a look at the familiar accessories. I'm not gonna unbox all of these. So again, we have the same literature. We have the same power brick and MagSafe 2 connector. Now let's go on to the MacBook Air. All right, so let's just peel this wrapper off and slide it out. And there it is, the big brother, the 11.6 inch mount looks exactly the same, just a bit wider. All right, just to give you an idea of the size difference here, here's the 11.6 inch model. So you can see quite a bit smaller and more compact. It's also a bit thinner and certainly much lighter. On the back, it looks about the same. Of course, just shrunken down. So let's go ahead and open up the lid and take a look. We should also have that piece of paper here. Remove that. So obviously with the larger 13.3 inch model, you have more surface area for your palms as well as a larger glass trackpad. You still have the same size keyboard, so there is more space at the edge of the keyboard than the 11 inch model. There are no speakers built in here. The speakers are still located behind the keyboard. Uh, now the display again is 13.3 inches, so that's good for a resolution of 1440 by 900. That's a 130 pixels per inch. So that's slightly less than the 135 PPI of the 11 inch model, but of course you have a lot more resolution here to fill the screen up with more apps and that sort of thing. So there's more surface area to work on this display. And you also have that 720p HD camera for FaceTime HD with a little LED light hidden behind the uh, metal. And just like the 11 inch model, you still have this rubber gasket around the side, uh, which when it makes contact with the body, performs a nice or forms a nice seal and protects the glass from the keyboard. Now we still have that very thin wedge design. It's even more thinner feeling when you have the 13 inch model just because you have more surface area here. So it feels particularly thin on such a large 
laptop, uh, a large, relatively speaking. But we have a MagSafe 2 connector here, again, for charging. Have your USB 3.0 port, your combination headphone and microphone jack. You also have your dual microphone setup here again. Still have that thumb port for lifting up the lid. On the other side, you'll see your SD card slot, again, unique to the 13-inch model. The 11-inch does not have this. USB 3.0 port, so that's our second one. And your Thunderbolt port for connecting a display or other accessories. So you still have your hinge here. That plastic hinge with the integrated ventilation behind it. So you can see no matter how it articulates, you still have ventilation. You have your plastic feet on the bottom. You also have your pentalobular screws for removing the back panel. But again, you're not meant to remove that panel. And if you want more than 4 gigs of RAM, you're going to want to upgrade to the 8 gig spec. Alright, so let's bring this computer to life for the first time. Press the power button. The first thing I noticed right away is that the speakers are indeed much louder than the 11.6 inch model. So if you want better audio quality, you're probably going to want to go with the 13 inch. Now if we look at both of them side by side, you can see that the screen size influences a lot of other design elements here. Specifically the keyboard and trackpad. So you can see a much larger trackpad. For the 13 inch model, it's the same width, but it's just taller. You also have more surface area around the trackpad for your palm. You also have a larger keyboard, or what appears to be a larger keyboard. And really what's happening here is that they've shrunken down the bottom row and top row. Uh, to shrink the keyboard down so you have more surface area below the keyboard for the trackpad and palm rest. Uh, so otherwise, the keys between those rows are the same. So otherwise, a pretty standard Apple keyboard. So I would say the 13-inch keyboard is pretty much the standard Apple keyboard. It's the one you get on every other Mac. The 11-inch model has a specialized keyboard for its size. Now taking a look at the displays, obviously you have more room on the 13-inch model with a more traditional laptop aspect ratio versus the widescreen of the 11-inch model. So that gives you more room here for full website. So you can see you have to do a little more scrolling here to see the entire website uh, versus the 13-inch model. Now the pixel density here is slightly less, so 130 ppi versus 135 ppi. But of course you have more pixels here. Uh, to cram stuff onto the screen. So you have more surface area to work in. Uh, now the 11 inch model seems to be brighter and the color temperature seems to be warmer than the 13 inch model. So the 13 inch model is noticeably dimmer than the 11 inch model, but both look very high quality. It would be nice again if they had increased the quality of the display. So for example, the off axis viewing could be better, uh, just like on the um, uh, iMac, which they did a very nice job without changing the resolution, they improved the quality of the display. So it would have been nice if they brought that to the 11 inch and 13 inch MacBook Airs. Now the nice thing about this wider aspect display is that it's ideal for movie watching and with that brighter display it also looks a little bit better than the 13 inch model. So we click play here. You can see you have a little more space here on the top and bottom of the display versus the 11.6 inch model. Now if we take a look at our overall system performance using Geekbench, you can see that they score about 6600, some variability here. Uh, but that's an improvement over the 6300 I saw from last year's base model. So again, about 8% improvement. I'm not doing the math here, but uh, about 8% improvement, uh, which uh, gives you slightly improved results, but not dramatic results. But you have to remember that you had a 1.7 gigahertz processor versus the 1.3 on these models. So that's pretty impressive to gain that much uh, performance out of a lower power processor though, so that's pretty good. Now in terms of gaming performance, this is where things are a little more interesting because we do see a bump here from last year. So our last year score was about 17.21 frames per second. Now these are averaging around 20 frames per second. So there is a boost in gaming performance with the new graphics processor, but there seems to be a drop in CPU performance. So we have about 2.29 or 2.25 uh, for this year's model versus 2.4. Now in terms of disk write speed, we're starting to see some differences here between the 11 inch and 13 inch, which are more significant. Uh, so for example, you can see the write speed on the 11 inch is about 320 and uh, the read speed is about 730, which is a substantial increase from last year, uh, but you're seeing higher write speeds on the uh, 13 inch model. So that's about 100 megs more than the 11 inch and you're seeing the same read speeds, about 720. Again, this is almost double last year, especially the read speeds, which were about 400. Uh, and uh, the write speeds were about 250. So definitely a big improvement overall in terms of read speeds of the SSD. Now the difference in performance may be related to the fact that these appear to be using different SSD models. So this has an SSD labeled SD0128F. This is labeled SM0128F. 
Um, so that may be the uh, cause of the difference, but I'm not certain at this point. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Now it's kind of difficult to decide which one to get. I really like the portability of the 11 inch MacBook Air. I like the higher resolution display. It's also a little brighter. Uh, and you still get the backlit keyboard and you get the same performance of the 13 inch model except for the SSD which appears to be slightly lesser to the 13 inch. Now the 13 inch model at only $100 more gives you that larger display, an SD card slot, a much larger battery so again you get 12 hours of battery life versus 9 hours on the 11 inch Air. Uh, so for me $100 for this computer seems to be a much better bargain than the 11 inch Air but I still value the portability of the 11.6 inch model. So for me, this tends to be the one I choose. If I need something less portable, I usually go with my MacBook Pros with Retina display. So for me, in terms of portability, that's where the MacBook Air really stands out. And for me, I really like the 11 inch model. So that's gonna do for me in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next one.